Next, we will take care of displaying product tabs. That's uh, like description, additional information, product attributes, reviews that are usually displayed in a tapped component. But to make things more interesting, we will use Bootstrap Accordion component. So let's find it on the page. Here it is, and we can inspect the structure. So it has each item, it has accordion items, and each item contains a heading and the panel. So that's a bit different, like when we have tabs, the, the, there would be like tab pa parent element that would contain individual tabs, and then there would be another element that would contain individual tab pa panel, content panels. But here with accordion, the layout is that we have like for each, for each tab, we are repeating one element that contains both the header and the content panel. Okay, so we will use product tabs action to do that. So let's add product tabs action to the top accordion element. And again, we can see that this will generate a template, single product tabs tabs. And we First, we have to choose the layout. Either we will use the tabs layout or the accordion layout. The difference is, as mentioned before, that the, for accordion we have like the item that contains both the heading and the content. And then we have this item repeated for each um, item, for each um, information panel. So, okay, first of all, we don't want to use WooCommerce default JavaScript to power this accordion because that would conflict with Bootstrap 5 JavaScript. So we will check this. And then which element is repeated for each panel? So this one, accordion item is repeated for each panel. So we will select that. And then panel header is the element that represents the header of the panel inside the repeated panel. So this is this, the H2. And then panel header label, that's optional, but usually, like in, like in this case, we have panel header, but then the actual text is in the button element inside H2. So we will select the button as the element that should contain the label of the panel. And then the content, this is then the panel content, and the content body where the actual content will go, it might, it's not necessary the same as panel content, like in our case, we have special accordion body that then contains the actual information. So we'll, we will select that. Okay, let's export and see what happened on the page. And we can see that the output is the accordion and then we have description, we have reviews, and we can toggle between them. But uh, notice some, something special, kind of unusual, like when we load the page, both of the panels are open, and that's by design. So, because the first element is repeated, and the first element has, if we go into the classes, so I, I will disable JavaScript so that we it doesn't change while we are clicking on it.
So we have header, button, and here we have the, the panel is, it has the show class that shows the panel, and if the header would have collapsed class, then th this would be, like here you see, it's collapsed, that closes the, the element. But here we don't have the collapsed class, so the element is, the, the, like the tab is open. And also on the panel content, we have show class, so that the panel is shown. So that's why, because this is repeated for all the three panels, when we load the page, all the panels are open. And, and why do we want that? Well, it's simply, it's a matter of accessibility. So imagine if JavaScript is disabled on this page, and then people load it. So we want them to be able to see the content, right? Because without JavaScript, you know, these steps do not work. And if they are closed when the page loads, users won't be able to open them. So whenever we use JavaScript for kind of dynamic stuff on the page, we really have to pay attention and, and make it optional. So the info by default, you know, when we run the page without JavaScript, all the information should be displayed. Only if JavaScript is enabled, then we should kind of make it dynamic and, and play around with these fancy controls and, and implement the tabs and stuff like that. So, okay, let, let's uh, turn back JavaScript and reload. So, but still, although the, the panels work, but it would be nice when we load the page if JavaScript is enabled, that only the first panel is open. So to do that, we have to do a bit of JavaScript um, development. And there is also another, another issue. So let me go to a product that has some user reviews. Okay. Let's say that everything is closed at the beginning and except description. So we need a way to, if, if we click here on customer reviews, we need a way to jump here and to actually open the, the, the reviews, right? So that we can see them. We can see them now, but not before when this was closed. If it's closed, nothing happens. So we need some JavaScript code to power this behavior. I prepared it already because that, that would kind of beyond the scope of this course to go into uh, writing the code, but I will just walk you through it. So let's hide all the panels that we don't need. Okay. So the code is in custom JS and uh, we are using jQuery because it's bundled with uh, WooCommerce. So why not? And then what, what this code does, let's go, okay, let's just explain the functions has a couple of helper functions. One is scroll to and this function scrolls down to the provided element. And then we have handle hash and this is a function that takes care of the, of the hash of the current page either when we navigate to the page or when we click on the link for example. Like, like reviews link that takes us down to reviews. So what happens here? So first of all, we, we get the hash from the, from the location. 
and we get the URL of the page and then we kind of check what this is about and if it's a comment, review, tab reviews then we will use selector tab reviews and then if it's like comments then we will again use tab reviews and if it's additional information it will go to additional information or, and default is the description tab and then we get the button the accordion button for this selector and then if this button is already open then there is nothing to do but we in case this was just the the page was just loaded we search for the closest accordion and then we look for all the buttons that are not collapsed that are not open and that are different from our button and then for each of them we kind of close the the panel by adding classes to the button and to its associated panel directly or in this case we remove the show class from the panel to hide it and we add the collapsed class to the button in order to collapse the button okay but if the button is not hidden if it's closed then we trigger click on this button in order to open the panel and if, if skip scroll is not passed in we also scroll down to that element okay that's what handle hash does and we run it first when the page is loaded but we tell it here no need to scroll there explicitly because uh, if, if the URL already contains the hash then the browser will just kind of jump there automatically and we also run this function on hash change event on the window okay and this here is something else um, which actually we don't need it in this project so I, I will remove this code it's it, it's like implement plus minus uh, buttons for the quantity inputs um, but okay I will leave it maybe it's useful for you so anyway now this is what custom JS what it does but now we have to include it um, into the page into our template and again you know the first idea that comes to our mind is usually oh let's just add it to the page here in the footer but this will not work because this page uses a master page so only the main element is controlled by this page everything else is controlled by the master page so instead we have to add the custom js onto the master page let's do it and also because our code requires uh, jQuery we have to tell this to, to WordPress so we will search for NQ script action edit handle doesn't matter but here dependencies here we have to say jQuery let's export the team reload it reload the page so you see the first panel is open and the, the other two are closed so let's and there is a brief moment when all, all are uh, visible um, but that's kind of a drawback of this approach and also limitation of bootstrap how it how it implements the accordion but you know putting on on the scale the usability of our page accessibility of our page and, and kind of this flashy stuff the first one the usability is much more important especially here 
where we are talking about e-commerce and where every kind of glitch or annoyance that users experience on our web page will result in you know indirectly losing sales so it's not just philosophical it's really it's it's a matter of of um, sustaining a business it's economical so okay so let's let's try just to make double sure so turn off javascript reload and we should see everything there nothing is hidden and now if we switch it back on and reload then we get it okay what happens now if we click on customer reviews you see so this tab got open and we got scrolled down to the to the reviews element let's try it again yeah again so yeah it works okay okay so now what we did is the we defined the, the tab structure and we added custom JavaScript code that kind of makes everything uh, work, behave nicely. But we didn't yet touch like the, the content of individual tabs. And we can do that as well. And we will do that in the next step. Um, but for now, this is, um, this is a way how to implement the product tabs and there are two other options for how to do them like one is to, to implement a tab component and let Woo WooCommerce JavaScript to control the hiding and showing of the tabs or we could also use bootstrap tab component with some um, custom JavaScript code like we did here uh, but for now let's be happy with our accordion it looks cool and it works okay and now let's work on the content of individual tabs <laughs> 